switch to the regular scheduled program because the street's been waiting on this shit long Come enough, on, man. man. We've been over here trapping out this bando for the fucking longest. Come on. And we we finally, finally, finally got one of the legends out of the bay to Come stop on, through man. the trap. Come you know on, how many man. times they have left your name in the comments? Hey. Yeah. We see you wear the dope air shit, man. We was juiced. I've been told you to come <laughs> down here and check on us. And For let real. It, you know what I'm saying? Because it's like anybody with a radio knows exactly what you bring to the game, man. And it's like the Bay Area come on. and your name is synonymous. Hyphy. You've been out there putting out. You're like, first of all, big salute, man. On the independent, man, and you've been real consistent and kicking their ass and <laughs> coming up with classics and, <laughs> and great on, shit. And Baby David Jr. Come on, <laughs> man. And Why you keep doing me I like that? <laughs> Why? Oh, you owe him his, his proper respect, I man. I do, man. I hold him up, lift him up, and put him up there. <laughs> <laughs> nigga. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Fab is in the trap with us today. <laughs> <laughs> Man, there's a million good things you can say about this, man. man. Nah, I appreciate being here, man. We, um, for one, love what y'all doing, love what you're utilizing the platform for as far as, you know, just exposing the, 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 the culture down here, man, and doing what you're doing, man. We got a chance to come see y'all when y'all was in the Bay Area, man, and show yeah, the hotel. Yeah, we the, uh, mar the shit market was hilarious, bro. Yeah. And uh, the energy is always good, man, and fruitful, man. Like I said, man, we happy. I, I brought a guest with me, man. Um, well, I got to be a guest. Yeah. Why do I have to be? That's like you bring a stranger. Everybody, y'all been go. beefing all day. This actually, this why? actually. That's a guess. Episode. Why you can not say I brought my he uncle, just brought brother? Why you can not just say I brought my uncle along? Why you gotta call me a guest? My bad. Don't don't do him like that, man. He's sick of your shit. He told me this is really your show, and I'm just supposed to be here with you. But listen, to what I'm saying, nephew. It's a different approach to people when you say stuff like you said. That's a guest. I mean, I really don't know him, but I brought him along. If you just say, man, I brought a special guest. Now that's a little different. Okay, I brought a, my let uncle. Let me say again. Yeah, right. I brought a special guest. Ooh, yeah, my uncle. Ah, okay. Let's clap for him. Okay. Yeah. That, that made me feel a little bit. I mean, he a cold nigga, but I ain't heard none of his music. I don't know what it is. Oh, that nigga don't rap. Oh. Nigga's gonna give me a case, man. <laughs> Why? <laughs> That's what this nigga do, man. This nigga gonna give me a whole case, man. Go Y'all niggas be into it all the time. Listen, he throw parties Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and sometimes Sunday. And he gonna be opening the store on time? You Never lying. on time for the store. <laughs> He throw stripper parties all week, like after hours. And he get his his outfit straight off the top. And don't pay for nothing. <laughs> <laughs> don't be changing clothes you, in the middle of the store. You want to have shit. this conversation on here. Do you really want to have a conversation about me getting some clothes? Well, I'll pay you on clothes. Okay, yeah. <laughs> That's the only time to pay you give out, fool. You like the strip clubs out here? Strip clubs, probably not, you Come on now. They really stripping out here. I'm yeah. trying to get Yeah, they don't get butt naked where we at. At his parties, they, they be having on all the shit. Nah, that ain't. They don't even show pussy at your party. What they dress like? They finna go. Why? Why? I'm tell you why. Because in the Bay Area, we come from a pimp like culture. Right. So a lot of the guys with money feel like if they throwing money, they tricking. Right. You understand me? So I just so if girls ain't you get naked, you get naked for some money. You feel what I'm saying? So do we be throwing money, we just be throwing it for what? For the look. You don't gonna lie, you wanna lie on camera, we throw it cause we have fun. We getting money, so we gonna throw You know what, tell them what you do. You, we doing what for the people? It's for the look. But listen. No, 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 for what? the girls, you doing what? We taking care of single mothers. That, thank you. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> we throw money, we help them take care of the They gotta show pussy next time, huh? What? Wait a minute, y'all throw money, but they don't get naked? Yeah. Nah, that shit, y'all be mad as fuck if y'all came out to one of our parties. They will, throw, they will get naked. They got naked on my birthday. Then he get naked on my birthday, nephew. I he think that's a funny. <laughs> they, they be having clothes. They be like in white tees and shit. Nah. Uh-uh. Y'all leave? Nah. Y'all wouldn't leave? Y'all. This is Atlanta, bro. Atlanta. The strippers come to the stage naked. They do. I seen it. She drove there naked. <laughs> <laughs> she got out the car and ass out. <laughs> What's in the roll of suitcase? My outfit. Why you bitch? They don't even got outfits out here now. With clothes on, it still be naked. <laughs> yeah. Man, it's got crazy. naked clothes. Nah, it do that shit. But it's different though. But we try to, you know, 
When we came to Atlanta, man, when I think one of some of my first time, Short brought me out here. I was a kid. And the culture was just like. Too Short brought you to Atlanta when you was a kid? Yeah. Man, how what old you mean? were you, bro? That's big, bro. Short 55, nigga. I'm 38. I'm saying, but like. You wasn't a kid. Who the fuck just let the kids just go to Atlanta with oh, my Short? Mama, my mama was a player, man. <laughs> and she was a player. She was just like, nigga, go learn the game, you know? I, I'm, a, I'm a student of the game. I'm like, I'm a real child of the game. Like, I come from some real culture. Like, you know, like, uh, how scrappy he is, how his mama, like, a yeah, player. Something like that. Yeah. Like, just like a real like player. To come, you feel me? She come from this culture where she just, like, nigga, she know how to shit. She fuck with all the players. Like, I mean, I went out one night. I ain't, I ain't know who she was when I first seen her. I'm like, man, who is that? Like, nigga, she the nigga out here. <laughs> it was like, you feel me? But all the players, all the bosses, the gangsters, the deep boys, they all like, what's that? And I'm like, man, I'm like, that she remind me of my mama. And so I come from the game, man, like, you know? And my mama just always kept me around some game because she knew that this would be the position that I would soon yeah. inherit. So I, I learned it to become wise, to come listen and become observant and all that shit, man. So. That's how I got the game, man, from everybody. But when Short brought me out here, I fell in love with the culture. I was like, yo, this shit was crazy. So we've been taking like that strip club shit back to the house, but we don't got cabaret licenses and stuff, and all our parties are over it. Under, it, you got to be under. You can't do it like yeah, like you that. You can't just have an establishment where you can actually throw a stripper party. You got to be underground. Oakland don't have a cabaret license, uh -huh. so the girls can't like. It, it's actually illegal. <laughs> That's why we gonna go to jail when they catch us. Well, you, they, they ain't really getting naked. You just said on camera that I throw the parties. Did now, I just say listen, we? Hold, no, you didn't say we. You said I just I, said they gonna go to jail when they catch us. How? Because you already told everybody I do it. So how are you gonna take you to jail for what? Oh, I'm gonna bail you out. That's the purpose of having a rich nephew. You right about that? An influencer, huh? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, you still gonna make me sit a couple days because you funny like that. <laughs> you the type of nigga that's saying, Unc, I'll call again. You gonna say, I'm gonna say, nephew, you gonna say, I'm on my way down to the bell bottom. He way somewhere else doing some shit. He ain't Don't got no leave. business. <laughs> Trust me, man. You gonna have me sit two days for you come get me? You be all right, nigga. You been in jail your whole life. You right this the that? one you don't want to be in there with. My nephew coming to get me. Yeah, my nephew coming. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. My nephew coming. Well, in the, old we, school, you might well go yeah. and lay down, Tomorrow bro. Tomorrow come, they gonna be like, where your nephew at, man? Hey, yeah. Man, I'm telling you, my nephew coming, man. <laughs> he ain't never let me down. What you say the song was? <laughs> yeah, okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, we heard of him. That's your nephew. Yeah, right. <laughs> Fuck. Uh, how you get your start in the game? Um, my rap start in the game, it came from, um, my, we was selling tapes at school. Me and my boy AC, we was, uh, we would, AC was set up like, in our mind, you couldn't tell us it wasn't the studio. Mm. But in his room, it was a little boom box. He broke up. He, Y'all good? Y'all all right? Yeah, it's just... Oh, all right. All right, I ain't know. Yeah, shit be um, handling it. Okay. <laughs> he broke off the headphones from like some Radio Shack headphones. Do, do they still got Radio Shack? No. No. Okay, so he broke off some headphones. He tied, like he... This nigga was creative, right? He glued and tied and taped one of the headphones on the wall. Like, that was the mic. He glued it right there. And then the other one, he had the one tape and the other tape, and we would record. And if you messed up, you fucked up the whole tape. You had to rewind the whole Maxwell back. That's how I nigga got good at freestyle. You feel me? Them one takes, Ooh. cause we couldn't afford to. You couldn't afford to mess up, niggas. Was we was we was fit, the tape up. We fucked Come up. On, we was 15, 16. Them tapes got expensive to a nigga. For, I was the youngest. I was like 14. They was like 16. So we would, and then we would take the tapes. Like we would do shit like beef and diss other high schools. Like our sports teams, like, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> and we would diss them so, but it would be like an anthem. So at our basketball game, nigga, we'd be playing it, and the school would be like, you nigga got a whole song about us? That would have <laughs> Like, so, it was, that's what got that us popular. That the whole game. Man, we been fighting that. Right. Been that fighting. got us popular when we was young, man. So we were selling tapes, and we was like, you know, we was, we was young pretty boys, man. We was always like best dressed fly athletes, and all the girls liked us, man. So that shit just kind of like carried over. I just kept working on my craft. Opened a few doors, kept grinding, and you know, if you stay on your road, man, you stay on your path, eventually things will begin to flourish for you. Got a chance to uh, link up with, with, with uh, Jazzy, which was, was a big DJ in the Bay. He put out my first album and linked up with Mac Dre, man, like, you know, and, and Mac Dre personally reached out to me and was, man, helped change a nigga life, man, by just putting that stamp on me. Right. And, uh, 
it was just sad, man, because he never got a chance to see my album come out. Like, you know, he died. Um, he was assassinated, man, right before the album came out, and we just we just had to keep pushing it, though. But, you know, um, somber moments for happiness, man. You know, every success story has those somber moments. But, you know, we keep it lit for him, man. And, you know, years later, we always going to represent for, you know, for the Dre nigga. Right. Come on, man. Got you. Got you. Got you. Rest in peace. Clap, nigga. Tears in peace. Yeah, I mean, they smoking all this motherfucking weed around me. I go fuck around and relapse with them. They ain't even about that. I don't be talking about that. Oh, they gonna smoke a blood in front of me. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's what I mean. They gonna smoke a blood in front of me. Okay. You know what? I'm gonna fuck around and relapse. I'm gonna blame that shit. I'm gonna be looking for the hair on the spot, nigga. Don't do that. Don't let us be the reason. Don't let us be the reason. Come on, man. Shit. Oh, you gonna come back to your nine ways? This nigga's leaving the bathroom. <laughs> they already knew when I said relapse, that nigga said tartine off. He <laughs> <laughs> already knew. That's it. Relapse is serious. Relapse is just yeah. serious. Trust me, boy. I won't be on. I'll be unk the flunk. Uh, how long you been off dope? Uh, eight years. You got eight years clean? Yeah. You good name, man. Y'all clap for that, man. Clap for that, man. Clap for that, man. Clap for that, man. That nigga's off heroin, nigga. He was on drugs, drugs. <laughs> Damn. Nigga, you on drugs, drugs, huh? Yeah, I had to, you know. What? I ain't, I ain't ashamed of it, nigga. You ain't ashamed of your drugs? You can't be ashamed of something you overcome. Hmm. You know yeah. what I'm saying, man? You should yeah, be real. Like, a lot of people, a lot of people <laughs> are overcoming and then don't want to tell nobody about it. I'm proud of the moment of me overcoming drugs. So I we can laugh about it, have fun about it, we can do whatever about it. Because in my life, it's something that really means something to me, so we can talk about it. it don't you like hip hop Samuel Jackson, huh? <laughs> 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 what gave you the motivation to say, fuck it, I'm taking this, I'm taking my life back? I don't know, I think just, don't, why are you holding my business? Fuck you mean you don't know? <laughs> it wasn't you, nephew. I was clean already, then I'll get to you. <laughs> I'm not. Hey, I was that I was straight when I started fuck yeah, out. Don't act like that. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Now, I I do it. <laughs> you know, I think some, at some point, some people, when they're going through their addiction, they just completely give up. Mm. I had never gave up. You know what I'm saying? Me? So I, always, I still had some fight in me. And I just think at some point, I just got tired. I just got tired of the cycle going in and out of prison. I got tired of keep getting high. And I just woke up and said, man, I'm going to do something different. Yeah. And, and I put the work in. One thing about recovery is that it's a whole lot of work. It, it, people will say, man, go get clean. I was getting high for over t like 20 years, 20 some years. So it's like, it's a lot of psychological, it's a lot, of, it's a lot to deal with. You got to like almost reinvent yourself. Hell yeah, if you have for 20 years straight <laughs> and then you come back down and you like. You don't know nothing about life. Hey, and I see why I left this shit. Hey, look. <laughs> Y'all still doing this same shit? <clears throat> they never knew hey, when that was a thing. This shit wasn't working. <laughs> hey, so you, you know. never woke up and had. Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> so you know that's how it be. So that's real though. Shit, it's you real. still had some fight in you. That's the I still had some fight in me. You know what I'm saying? Because motherfuckers give up. They give up. It gets to a point where you feel like you you accept yo. I didn't accept my life. I I knew something was better inside of me. I just couldn't figure out how to get to it. You know what I'm saying? Me. Every time I say, "All right, I'm getting out of jail," time I ain't doing nothing. And in some way, I will align myself with the same people that would align me to the same activities. And that's what my nephew come, to, come in at. Even though I was clean, I was like, I was just stuck right here like this. I was like, all right, I ain't going this way, but I don't know where to go. So it's like, you can just be standing there for so long and eventually, if you don't figure something out, you're gonna go right back over there. And I was lucky enough, my nephew said, come on, I'm gonna help you do some of the stuff that you're trying to do. And with time, we just developed an amazing relationship to the point where we fill all those voids in each other's lives. That, yeah, voids, no father. Yeah, I'm like your daddy. So don't get <laughs> So look, hold on, man, right? I'm just telling the truth. So a lot of stuff I feel voids. 
You know, I, I ain't never I, had a I little like brother. A father figure too. <laughs> yeah. I'm like your daddy. I'm like your daddy. Don't <laughs> <laughs> be here. You know the pain. You can do your daddy. Hey, now look, what? Let me I'm so like your daddy. Hey, now check this out. Check this out. Now this might not. I'm, I'm this really your daddy. Hey, check this out. And this might not be funny, right? <laughs> oh, this is hilarious. Hold on, this because is the nigga daddy got high too. <laughs> So I'm like his daddy that recovered. You know what I'm saying? I'm like his daddy that bounced back. Oh, I'm like his daddy that bounced back. Me, man, me. Hey. Man, this nigga hell, boy. No, and if the truth of you, it's hell, man. I'm like your daddy that bounced back, man. <laughs> You know, and he look out. You know how you be like, damn. That's real, you stupid, though. But, oh shit. Oh, I'm like your daddy. That, that nigga is stupid, man. man. <laughs> I see why you had to say this nigga like, man. Man, yeah. this nigga is crazy, man. Oh shit. This shit been, it's been like, but not the the beauty of it is, man. People get a chance to see a real family unit. Right. Like what what we've been able to do is like it's a uncle and nephew in every family like this. You know what I'm saying? And if it yeah. rather they it used to be or it still was, you know, when the families was like like you you miss that uncle that was like that because like he said, your uncles be your dads. Like when and when we grow up in the ghetto, sometimes we don't even know our dads. Who you gonna learn from? So your uncles be like your daddies. Yeah. If your daddy died or your daddy on dope or your daddy in jail. The next thing, the closest thing to you is your uncle, mm -hmm. and he's gonna take that role up. And so we get, we we like, man, we just show people that that unit of saying, man, this is us, and we we put it out there like that, man. But like they say at home, they call us like, you know, the new Sanford and Son. It just be <laughs> nigga crazy, man. <laughs> Funny though. Hey, you man, don't want to say who you really is, Lamont. <laughs> Lamont, but <laughs> you like a real life big dummy. You swat the motherfucker. <laughs> no, listen to me, bud. I have you heard a motherfucker that was so smart, so intelligent, that he'd do some shit and you'd be like, how the fuck you that dumb? <laughs> like, what? Oh, you, you got it. Cause you, you, sometimes you be doing some dumb shit, bro. I'd be like, how, my nephew? How, you feel know I me? Mean? That's fucked up, you throw me under the bus like that. <laughs> Boy, we like, we like quick and sugar then. Sugar and quick. Hey, Red See, that was you, Red, Red Fox, Fox at the dice game. That's how you be when you be driving. <laughs> what he did? <laughs> you be letting on drive, man. Yeah, I, I don't drive nowhere. I hate driving. Oh, yeah. I, I damn near brought, drove the new car before him. Yeah, I just I just bought a Lambo, and I just gave him the keys. I ain't feel like driving. I, be, I don't like driving. I like cars, but I don't like driving. You do like driving, because you wouldn't have bought a Lambo if you didn't. No, if really you didn't like driving. driving, you would have got some shit like. No, I wanted the car because I wanted the car. I want to be able to be like, yeah, bitch, that's me. What's up with you? Um, somebody gonna drive it. Dude. Yeah, but I'm gonna be dr I'm gonna get drove though. Like, um, you feel me? I've been seeing your car shit. Your car is dope. And you sent me that one shit. That shit was hard. I'll be trying to keep some dope shit. You I know? see. Oh, was it national? You sent me? Yeah. Red that's the one outside? outside? Mm mm, that's a Monte Carlo. That's a Monte Carlo. Oh, yeah. Oh, okay, yeah. yeah. Sometimes they yeah, take the Monte Carlos and flip them. Let me get that national when you're ready. Like, let me, let me, let me, let me just ride with you. I'll ride with you. Hey, man. Fuck with you. This nigga the black hole of cars. Are you serious? Yeah. That? Oh, he just hold on to him? Oh, nigga. Oh, nigga. It's not about me. This oh, is about Uncle now. Yeah. And, uh, nah, this, this nigga. Welcome back to the 85 South Show. <laughs> you see? <laughs> it's not about me. You I see? don't have nothing. <laughs> I started from the bottom and I'm still there. Yeah. <laughs> Think about the dope era, man. The era shit, man. Uh, the whole era. Man, we come from the era, man. You know, we, like I said, man, we, we, we come from the era where even the eras of our era, it taught us so much. And I felt like the only eras was the dope. Like, if you erase dr drugs from the community, man, during the times that we grew up in, like them 80s and early 90s, uh, it was been the best time. Man, she was a great man. With so many black-owned stores, black menaces, black clubs, black yeah. markets. Like you know what I'm saying, it was communities. You knew the neighbors. Everybody had, you know, your neighbor had control to whoop your ass. Every ghetto now, before crack hit, 
was really a black suburb. Mm. And when the drugs hit, it turned them into ghettos. Like, it, mm. it was already ghettos, but what I'm saying, like, it was where you seen people working at, where right. people was getting up in the morning when you going to school, they going to work or whatever. And then when crack it, it changed, to, it turned into the hood because everybody was everybody, unemployed. And this thing, you know, me, I'm like, come right, right when, like when crack hit, I was like 14, 15. You seen everybody, <clears throat> before that, everybody just played you sports. You cough again, nigga, you gonna have to get up. <laughs> Listen to me, brother. Before then, everybody just played sports, played outside. You can be on somebody's porch all night, nobody will start looking for you. Then drugs came. When drugs came, <clears throat> everybody switched up. It went from Miss Johnson to... Auntie. To, to Auntie. You understand what I'm saying? Oh, so we stopped calling her Miss Johnson and start calling Call her, her auntie. auntie. Why? Because she now she I don't have the same respect level for her hmm. because she's purchasing drugs. You know what I'm saying? So now she we went from her being able to tell us everything to her not being able to tell us nothing. Mm. You know what I mean? So that's when everything. Nigga, you've been watching my interviews, you don't never talk like this. <laughs> I keep telling you, big dummy. <laughs> <laughs> that all the game you get, you get from me. You're just you can word it better than Whatever. Me. So and the I, dope era. Yeah. That was the dope era. So what we did was we created a clothing line. Right. That kind of refurbished some of the good things of those times. We took memories from cartoons through sands and we just put it on t-shirts. We put it on clothing and it, 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 it took off, man. It took off demographically. Um, and we became a household name in the fashion department out there, man. We was able to start it selling shirts out the trunk of our car. My brother, Duct Tape, was doing the designs. Um, me and G Phil, rest in peace to my business partner, my brother, you feel me? He recently just passed. Damn, and, uh, sorry to hear that. He and I would be in the car, we'd <laughs> fill up a rental, man. You wouldn't see nothing. You would, would just all shirts and everything, and we go block for, to block, hood to hood, selling, selling T-shirts, man. And, uh, and crypto, man, uh, my brother Bull, who sent you the, who sent you the, the red, uh, he would just be doing the marketing and stuff like that, man. And like I say, man, we went from selling shirts out the trunk of the car to our first store that was in the hood to now we got uh, a million dollar business, man, down, you know, uh, uh, downtown in the heart of Oakland, man, at Epicenter Oakland. Come on, man. Come on. Town business. And you taking the dope area and you bringing that shit back around. Just like you said, we used to have businesses. Now. Right. And that's what you're starting to see more of. For real. So you see the you yeah. see the clothing store business, then you see the nightclub, then you see the nail shops, then you see like, you know, everything, all the other businesses that we're allowing to do. And then what what we do in the community is we do the side of the things that the dope boys used to do. I remember um, vividly having a report card and go take it to one of the big homies that was on the corner and he would give me $50 for every A, $25 for the Bs. And, but if I got any, a D or C, that would, I would have to give him. So, you know what I mean? So that was, that was motivation. So what we're doing is we're implementing that same philosophy and those strategies with these kids that we're dealing with, with programs uh, that we have called Creating Change. The Creating Change program is uh, reinventing the role models and changing the narrative of, the, of, the, of what's going on in the inner city. We do trips. Uh, where we take kids to uh, different amusement parks, movies, museums, and things like that stuff. We do these things uh, monthly where we just gather all the kids together in the neighborhood and be like, man, drop your kids off at the store, man, and you know, we go take them out to these places. And so those are the things that we're now, we are re reinventing the role models because the dudes that we looked up to was either killers, drug dealers, pimps, or players. Right. So now you can see some successful individuals from the community that come from the same places that these kids look up to, that they follow, and we can give them some, some better guidance. What type of advice are you giving up and coming rappers that followed you the same way? Um, like, it's a lot, cause you know the Bay Area is popping right now with a lot of young talent buzzing and doing their own thing, staying on the independent route also. Man, there's so many talented people in, 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 in the Bay Area and Oakland specifically. Shit, in my neighborhood and in, in the North and Ice City, you got uh, you got so many different artists, man. That's just working, that's grinding. Um, you know, when you get to naming names, if you forget a name, you got to deal with that at home. It's yeah, yeah. Line it up. It's a whole <laughs> bunch. One thing, bro. No, bro. Fuck that, bro. How you got down there, bro? You forgot me, bro. <laughs> so you, I so, live right here. <laughs> you ain't say me. Come on, bro. <laughs> so it's 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 hella talent right now. Like the young guys, uh, where we from, and it, it it's tough to give them some of the game that I received because I got it from 
the original. Like, I got it. People don't, you can say whatever the fuck you want to say about Too Short. Like, you know, to those real hip hop enthusiasts. Down South, we love Short. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, Back yeah. home, we love, they love Short the same way we love Short at home. Because uh, this was his second home, really. Atlanta yeah, was his second home. Yeah, he came down here in the 90s. Yeah, this was his second yeah. home. But when you get to, like, talking to, like, some of the hip hop purists and those, and they like, oh, Too Short. Like, you know, they try to shit on dog. But one thing a nigga can't say is, nigga, Short was the first rapper in Northern California. Like he's telling nigga, I may not be the best, I may not have done whatever, nigga, but one thing you can't deny, nigga, I was the first. He was like, nigga, I was famous off rap in 81. Yeah. yeah. You know what I'm saying? <clears throat> so I'm like, damn. So saying that to say, I got it from the independent messiah himself. Right. So when I tell the youngsters, dude, you got to get on your grind, you got to go hustle, they be like, bruh, the game ain't like that no more, big bruh. Niggas ain't now passing out CDs and shit like that, bruh, my mama, bruh. Then they be like, hold on. You may not have no actual CDs, but nigga, you could go get them flyers with your QDR codes on them. And I tell people, the grind is more important to me than the actual music. Right. Yeah. It's like, learn the music, make some dope music, be creative, but nigga, hard work be talent when talent don't work hard. All day, every day. Every time. We've all seen the niggas, we're like, how did this nigga make it? Yeah. And then you see, no, this nigga was going crazy. This nigga was hard. Like, a story that I always like to share, I got cut from my basketball team when I was in the 10th grade. And I was like, the year before we went undefeated. And it was like, you know, basically the team was surrounded, like it was my team, like it was hard, but a new regime had came in. It was a new coach. The older coach had retired. So a new coach came in and he came in with like his whole new set of rules. And the first day of practice, he was like, listen, I know you guys did good last year. Everybody, you know, we, hey, how you doing, man? Well, you know, you know, I know who you are. Well, well I'm, you know me, I'm like, of course you know who I am. Nigga, you here because of me, nigga. The fuck is you talking about? Like, what's up? Like, I'm like, you know, we running our <coughs> program. I can't help it, bro. I can't help it. <coughs> what you want me to do, nigga? <coughs> yeah. Oh, you just gonna Kytus. sit here like this shit ain't. That's your uncle, some bro. Tough times, nigga. Brian Kytus, bro. Oh, All right. That's um, your uncle. So anyway, we. So the coach come in, the nigga first day of practice, nigga say, "Listen, I know y'all do whatever y'all did last year, but look, man, everybody is starting with a clean slate on this team, and you are gonna have to make this team." I'm like, I'm like, what do that mean? Like, nigga, like we got our team going. Yeah. So we had practice lollygagging and bullshitting and woom woom. So, you know, about another week, about a week of practice too. He's like, listen, man, look, I want to sit all you guys down. You know, I love what you're doing, man. I love your energy. I know who you are, man, and all the whole shit. Um, but I'm gonna let you know, man, you, you, you haven't been looking pretty good in practice, man. You know, you just, you half-assing, man. And like, you know, you're making it seem like you already made the team. I'm like, dude, we went undefeated last year, bro. I averaged a lot of points. I'm, I'm what are you talking about? Like, nobody better than me on this team. What are you talking about? I said, man, I'm just telling you, man. I'm just telling you. So about two, three weeks later, man, this nigga posted the cuts. Like, he was, it's cut day. Cut day was so crazy. I'll never forget this embarrassment. This is a level of embarrassment that I never want to reach again. Cut day come. This nigga posts the cuts on the gym, like, at the, on the door. So me, as I say, I remind you, I'm a cool kid. I'm, you feel me? I'm always dressed, I always got the latest and the greatest, I'm fashionably late all the time. I walk up, my slow slut, uh, slow strut, you feel me? You said you was a slow slut. That's <laughs> <laughs> what you said. We ain't getting past that part, nephew. You just called yourself, I told you the big dummy. I just told your dumb ass, you just said I was a slow slut. Yeah. I wasn't fucking. Yeah. Anyway. We go to the door and niggas is just looking at me like. I'm like, what niggas looking at me for? So I go look at the cuts. I'm like. Hey, my name ain't on here. <laughs> he like, come step in the office with me. Man, step in the office with, huh? Niggas laughing. Now you niggas want to see me fail, right? They laughing. They crack. They high. Bro, that nigga got cut, bro. 
I was. If it was social media, I would have been destroyed, right? My high school career would have been over. I wouldn't have been able to go to no school, independent studies. So I go in the office with him. We sit in the office. This nigga like, man. I'm like, man, what's up? He like, man, I told you, man, I, I need you to show a little bit more effort, man. You know, I'd rather take 12 guys that's working their ass off, man, than a, a guy who thinks he's a superstar doesn't have to work for this team. Long, short story, shorter, I get cut. I transfer schools the next day. Um, but it taught me a lesson. It taught me a lesson. The lesson was, nigga, no matter how talented you are, no matter how talented you think you are, you still got to work hard. You know what I'm saying? You got to still work hard. And um, the moral victory in that was it taught me a lifelong lesson. And um, I seen my coach recently on Facebook, and I hadn't seen him in several years. And I reached out to him, and I told him, I said, man, I want to thank you for a very valuable lesson that you taught me at a young age, man, that nothing is a given and, and, and not to expect anything. And <clears throat> with that gift that you gave me, man, it's something that I, that I was able to base my hustle off for the rest of my life. And that's how I've been doing, man. Still this day, I'm still grinding. And, and I, I paid him back, man by, you know, becoming who I am today. And then I got my retribution back when we played them in a tournament and we beat them oh. niggas by like 27. I thought she was good. Yeah. I, if we found the nigga on Facebook, I would have looked through his pictures first. Yeah. Just to make sure. It sounded like he was, bad. he was a terrible coach. He was. Yeah, terrible. But a, but a nigga that cut. That nigga was the losingest coach in high school history. A nigga cut my coach. A nigga cut my I'd rather story. have four losers yeah, one winner. than three strangers. <laughs> I'm gonna take two winners, <laughs> three average people, <laughs> and a bench full of midgets before I have you on my team but fucking up my play. He was one of them niggas, he was one of them niggas that was like, he was one of them dudes that, you know how police officers be niggas sometimes, be the niggas that got bullied, and and they was like those guys that got bullied, got picked on. He was one of them guys, like he wasn't he ever was really a So what you trying to say, Jeff, that he was never the yeah. star of any team. Yeah. Right. Yeah. He had to work so, hard. So that's why he said that. Yeah, he had a workman's mentality. It was like I a blue think, collar. I didn't think he had a, a, a I'd problem I'd rather go and have a good time. <laughs> that's what it was. He had a problem with stars. Like he had a problem with. He had a, and I wasn't necessarily even kind of having fun. He had a problem man. like, you think <laughs> you better than us. Like, you exactly, think you, exactly. you, you, know, yeah, yeah. So, you know, some niggas go hard on niggas like that. They be like, the police officers that if beat you. If you get in a position to do it, you will. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So, but, but big shout out to Jose Do, uh, Bodipo, man. Um, I appreciate you, man. You feel oh, me right. for everything. Uh, you know, it's What's all your good. Record? He wasn't clear this shit up now. Oh, no, I don't clear it up. I tell him that all the time. I like that. That story taught me a lot. It taught me how to grind. I'd rather have four decent athletes. <laughs> That to play hard for ice cream after the game. They probably didn't even want to play somebody that's going to act like that and already won. Man, we beat the shit out them boys when we played them. You act like we did. I don't know how you acted, nephew. Oh, did I? We was on you high school sports on the night time. So what? Did I? And, you know, I came to the school with every Nike sock up. I had, like, seven Nike socks. You know, I got the ankle sock, the half sock, the other sock, the big sock, the long sock. Yeah, I was one of them niggas. I dressed for 13 wristbands. Headband, like you know what I'm saying? I was on the court? Up, on the court. You know, you got the headband on, you got the one wristband, two, and three. One, one, you got the one. You just hear that coach now. Oh, hey, don't pay him no attention. <laughs> hey. <laughs> hey, one man can't win no game. Man, I'm, I was doing shit. You know, we were styling, whatever. I think I had a, I, we played in the pennies that tournament. The pennies that just came out, too. Which one? The phone positives, the Ooh, first 200s. The blues? What? Remember yeah, the 200s? Yeah. Nigga, I had them on. They was hella. They like, bro, you hooping in the pennies, bro? He hooping pennies? That nigga you, hooping yeah. pennies? When you see a nigga hooping some shit. No, nigga, step up on the court first thing. We got there talking shit. I got 13 wristbands on. I was a nigga. All the girls used to come to the games to come see me. I had the Iverson braids. I was wrong. Oh. <laughs> For real. Those were the days. Those were the days. I can't do shit now. now. We played last week. We did a... Uh, Backpack giveaway in the hood. I played two games, nigga, and died. They woke up the next day talking about, oh, my knee hurt. Oh, you don't got none of that uh, CBD cream? Shit. <laughs> that was your dumb ass. Don't get out of here. <laughs> you I died. <laughs> I still got it. No, you don't. No. No. We won, though. It don't matter. It wasn't no. because of you who had something to do. Put that on your mama. <laughs> Nephew, let me tell you something. Nigga, on your mama, I was nephew, out there balling them niggas. This is what I heard, nephew, from the streets. <laughs> nigga, you watched it. Are you going to listen? Are you going to listen? But I heard from the streets. Did you listen to her? I seen you. Yes, I seen your activities. But listen to what I heard from the streets. What? They said that we have to allow him to show out to make him look good. Because if not, he's going to be feeling some type of way. It so, yeah, the niggas let you win. We won. Them niggas <laughs> trying to beat me up. We won. 
I feel you. Unk ain't never gonna give a nigga his credit. Because if you give him hey. his credit, he gonna get lackadaisical and then strive hey. for life. So if I spell tell it, him, nigga, listen. You know, I don't need to spell it. You know I have special ed classes. Why you want to put me on blast out here, motherfucker? Take that one class. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Old school coach died in our school. Oh, he went out to the Everything. That's the worst. Go get your lunch and bring it back. That nigga had one class <laughs> all day. They pushed you through because you was good in hoop. That's it. It's everything, nigga. Not just hoop. But How much, what's the highest you scored in the game? Huh? 52. You already know it, man. You scored 52. <laughs> man, he know it already. He's like. like oh, you was going crazy. Oh, you be lying like fuck. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody seen you score That's 52. Told you that already. <laughs> Easy. Everybody told Nobody you that. Nobody saw you score 52, huh? They don't got to. I'm going to go. <laughs> Google it. What? I'm gonna go Google we it. We tried to. Your name ain't in the books. Uh, we go to place, that nigga be like, oh yeah, nigga, I had 71 in this school. <laughs> nigga, in this gym. My name in a uh, trophy chest. It is, still right now. You, you wanna go drive up here? I'll show you. Oh, uh, you had 52 on You know it, man. He don't like to give me my props, man. Why you always on the He broke the state like? record. Nigga like said I broke the state record. I, oh, nigga, I got the state record in this gym. Nigga, I went from 52 that night, nigga. I got oh, Aaron. I wasn't getting high yet. I wasn't getting high yet, motherfucker. Oh, no. oh, I wasn't 52. getting high yet. But I had 52. Oh, you ain't oh. never had 52. I can't say that I have. OK, exactly. So what you talking about? Oh. It, don't be, because I had, you feel me? Remember that pass you gave me where I told you? Did I tell you that was my corner when we was at the school? Did I tell you that this is my corner at the school? <laughs> you passed me the ball and what happened? In the corner. You hit one shot out of 30 shots, nigga. You Nephew. missed 30 shots Nephew. that game. I didn't shoot but one time. Why are you lying on camera, man? <laughs> okay. That nigga play like Bob Cousy. Yeah. <laughs> Shut your fucking ass out of here. You dribble down here. <laughs> nigga stupid, man. <laughs> Bro, y'all niggas got me crying, man. <laughs> man, welcome back to the 85 South Show, man. <laughs> <laughs> this podcast right here is for everybody lying ass uncle. Uncle say he had 52. <laughs> 53 <laughs> points. <laughs> this nigga know you lying, nigga. He's scoring no fucking 52 points. We got no resources, bro. Some niggas be there to vouch for shit. I got some niggas that vouch. But see, it, I, unlike your times, you got Instagram. Everything on there. You know what I'm saying? I didn't have Instagram. We didn't have none of that. We you had the Open Tribune. I got the orange paper, fool. I, I'm going to get it from my baby mama. <laughs> <laughs> she still got my highlights. She got your highlights. You your baby mama, you left your highlights with it. Uh, that's the only thing I left her with, was some highlights. Them shit's gone. <laughs> Oh my my God. God. <laughs> that nigga said his baby mama got the clip. Oh, oh shit. Man. She ain't got that shit no more. Yeah, but I've been 37 years. I know she's oh. about it. That's like that. 52 <laughs> points 37 <laughs> years ago. Oh my God. 52 points. 52. All hook shot. <laughs> <laughs> you know, they gave niggas a tech if you touch the rim. You get it? What? <laughs> what? what? <laughs> no, <laughs> never touch the rim. Can't touch the rim. <laughs> You can go up and lay it in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's back in the time where dunking was the white It was the illegal. If you got dunk, you got a tech. Uh, you just stuck. put it in like that. Me, Pistol Pete. <laughs> Come on, man. This nigga is crazy, man. Uh, 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 Jeff Curry. Jeff, Jeff Curry. <laughs> Jeff Curry. That's the granddaddy. Jeff Curry. Jeff Curry. Jeff Curry. That's the granddaddy. <laughs> That's Dale Daddy. That's one Dale old man. Dale Daddy. Fuck! This <laughs> nigga <laughs> oh, stupid, man. That shit, the uh, 52, though. We, 52. We believe that shit. Yeah, that's Bro, that's about how many mixtapes you didn't drop. 52. Yeah. This motherfucker dropped mixtapes for 15 years straight, didn't it? What's, what's the year? Wasn't it about 15? Yeah, I'm, I'm, uh, shit, 05, 06. I've been going. I got about 50 albums on Apple to Apple Music. Real shit, I was looking shit, at that man. shit the other day, like, right. I be dropping shit. <laughs> nigga, you be the last nigga to clap, man. You should stop clapping last. He don't like to see you doing good. Nephew, let me tell you something. I clap right? for you till my hands bleed. Let me, say, let me explain something to you, right? What? You know, this is the thing about life. They clap first, right? When they stop, when everybody, when the world stop clapping for you, right. since I started after them, I'm still clapping for you. All right, let me see. 
Right. That's what I'm saying. See, it don't matter who started. I mean, when you're on your downslide, I'm tapping you back up. Right. Damn, you got to drop two more albums because I only got 52. <laughs> I got 52. You I got, got 50. Drop, yeah, you got to come up with two more. <laughs> we drop it some when we get back, man. Yeah. I got to even your 52. You want to let me get on this time? For you never let me get on. I got two songs. I got one on the radio right now. I'm popping at home. For real? What's it go? Cream check. You don't know what that is? Uh, what cream check mean? <laughs> you want to get a cream check? No, no camera, man. Show her on what? camera. I'm not doing it on camera, man. Love, would you like to participate in uh, Art's uh, display of what a cream check means? No, don't, don't do oh. yeah. no. What is cream check? <laughs> mm -mm. Sounds like some nasty shit to yeah. me. Yeah. No, we don't want to do nothing. Uh, you, don't, you ain't trying to get What's him to sue like category. you get me fucked up, huh? <laughs> cream check. Uh, uh. Tell him what it is, nigga. Huh? Tell him what it is, nigga. So this nasty old man. You the one that got me doing this shit, so make sure you say it right, man. This nasty old man does this thing called cream. Like these girls, they like uh like 25 and 22, 23. Like he got girls, like young girls. They legal, so but they got <coughs> they like. They just younger than him. They just younger yeah. than him. Like They're you got young. These yeah. days you have to say shit yeah. like that. Like I right. can't get on right. here and say young girls. Right. right. Just okay. younger than him. They, they younger than him. Okay. Right. He got some girls in their 20s and they like, they love this nigga. Like, and they come to the store and, you know, it's this thing called cream check. So they be like, uh, uh, won't you give me a cream check? And he be like, all right. So Unc lay down on the ground and they, they sit on his face. So. So they sit on his face. Yeah. And we'd be like, cream check! Yeah. And they'd be like, ah, like how it smell. <laughs> and, and so he do the thumbs up. It's, it's a cream check, just to see if you've got some. Is it cream or not? If you got cream. Is it cream up under there? I'm telling yeah. you, it's popping. She got excited. You share our motherfucking lady. Stop, man. You can't be doing stuff like <laughs> that. Lady told me that was like this. No, stop. Minutes. You don't get a suit. We don't know that woman like Wait that. Wait a minute. You at <laughs> 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 That's what you did over there when you said, fuck it up. Just the, the cream checks, man. And the singles <laughs> called cream check. This the cream check. You do dumb up, dumb down? Yes. So some get thumbs down? I ran across like two of them that guy had a thumbs down. Damn. But they come, I'm talking about weekly, like, oh, can you do those cream check for me? Oh, Let you nest this nigga out. They ain't got the street yelling at Then when he be at the, sto at the strip club on the after hours, it really go crazy because they be, He'll sit down like right under the pole and they just, they just climb up and like drop it down on his pole, on his face. All kind of stuff. There's some old niggas that ain't living my life. Trust me, man. They all. <laughs> I'm you, 52, you, I ain't. You think this is good shit? You think you score 52? No, listen, I'm 50. No, I'm 50. I'm 50. I'm 50. But it's all right, niggas that ain't living that life. Man, they don't get the opportunity. To get the green young girls? This nigga crazy, man. Hey, man. <laughs> hey. You a try? No, no. We're going to get you a cream check when you come to the bay. I'm straight. I got I to wait till I get a little old. Listen, bitch. it don't be no, it be like bad bitches. I don't give a fuck. Oh. I got self-respect. OK. You saying I don't? You don't. How? You out here sniffing pussy through jail. <laughs> <laughs> what if it ain't the pussy that stinks just some stinking ass <laughs> jail? <laughs> The jeans stink. <laughs> Bitch, did you read the jeans? What does it smell like? The dope air. <laughs> Nephew, the man said, I don't have no self-respect, man. Nah, you don't got no you standards. Don't. You out here just sniffing pussy through the pants. Any pussy? Anybody can get if you ever decline? No. Yeah. 52. I hear the Listen to him. Oh, 52, 52 you ain't even that old. That's why you say that. You gotta be. I'm not. You a pussy sniffer. You <laughs> a pussy sniffer. You a pussy sniffer. I'm sniffing seat bites. Seat. Bite seat. Bro, you nasty, bud. I'm telling you, man, ain't nothing wrong with it. Now, people said, where I'm from, they think it's class. The type of shit he be saying after he get through sniffing. Where you been? Where you been? <laughs> I missed you. He like, man, I'm, I, I ain't gonna lie, man. That nigga be having, I be looking sometimes like, damn, huh? Uncle real player about that the shit. That real player. They be loving that I'm nigga, too. I'm just having fun and enjoying life, man. When you been through what I went through, hmm. you can laugh at Shit, you can sniff hair around. You can sniff some pussy. Yeah, you see what I'm saying? You better sniffing that shit. Yeah, sniffing. I done did a little bit of everything. I ain't gonna lie. Okay? You shot it through the main vein? I 
laugh, nigga. I ain't, I ain't, I ain't embarrassed about telling. Some niggas would be like, no, no, I just did this, I just did that. You did, did all that shit. I did a lot of shit that I, I don't regret. You don't regret? Because if I wouldn't have done it, I might not have been here. Mm. Uh -huh. So you gotta look at that. You can't say I, I, I don't regret it. I, you should know about Blackberry Grinder, nigga. <laughs> I don't Smoking know. designer, Zaza. You know, I don't regret it at this point. You be smelling that pussy for a three, five, you're easy fuck, my boy. Yeah, you sniffing a little ass with some Zaza. <laughs> you gotta do a couple cream checks, nigga, you don't act like, <laughs> I, I, you ain't got some cream checks, nigga. All uh, right, dude, you huh? trying to make it yeah, seem yeah, like. Y'all doing too goddamn much. What you saying, nigga, cream check, nigga. We been doing this shit, we ain't sniff no pussy. <laughs> <laughs> If we did, if the problem was y'all have been taking full advantage of all fame. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Creep check. All this pussy in here. <laughs> you survived all that shit just to let a piece of pussy take you. It's making crazy, it's man. Funny, man. One of them ones what? you gonna smell, you ain't gonna be able to come back from. Yeah. I really go out. Fucking ether. It's the nerves in the back of your neck go like it. That shit make your soul burn slow. Fuck. He had a seizure. I don't know what happened. It's in my eye! It's in my eye! This shit ain't stupid, man. But go back to your 50 albums you got, bro. Whatever. Oh, man. He hating. No. 50, though, for real. That's a lot of albums. You mad? You make five a year. I'm present. I'll do more than that. Huh? I'll be working. Yeah. Like, it just be grinding. I feel like you just got to put the work in. And then especially, we live in times nowadays where a nigga drop an album, and then next week, nigga be like, bro, when you going to drop something new? Like, nigga, I just dropped the album. That was greedy. Like, Carlos, man, when you going to do a new? Nigga, I just dropped my comedy special. No, no, I seen that one. I don't be talking to them people. <laughs> I don't. We be outside, man. So nigga be like, every day, not saying you don't, but niggas be really just want. It's like, damn, nigga, you want to overdose. Nigga drop an album two weeks later, nigga want a new album. And they're like, no, I got all the lyrics and everything downloaded on that last one. That shit was hard. I did a few TikTok videos to it and all kind of shit. Yeah. Nigga, what? Like, so I just we drop it. We yeah. and then when we go to the studio, like my work ethic in the studio, like at any given time, I could do like seven, eight records in the studio at one every like a session. So we be doing, I just be working, man. I want to big shout out to my brother, man, Charlie Rothstein, man, out here, man. It's an artist, dope here, artist, man. Uh Charlie Rothstein. Okay. He live, he live in, uh, he live in the A, but he from San Diego, and he been out here working his ass off, man. We been grinding, been pushing this dope here Atlanta shit for us, man. So we, we gonna, we gonna keep it going. That's what's up, man. Well, shit, it took you long enough to get over here and fuck with it. I'm gonna get some shit to you, man. I apologize this about my delay. This is the number one black show that's not on fucking TV. <laughs> We gonna get on TV. It's a black TV show, but it ain't on TV. Nigga, that's coming soon. <clears throat> this I, is TV, though. We own a lot of people TV. I mean, they watch it on the TV, but that don't mean it's a television program. Will y'all take a deal if they want to come get y'all one? I mean, yeah, but we gotta have enough money so we can all be rich assholes. You want not just enough money where we can be ourselves and rich. I mean, I'm talking about where we could be just rich and obnoxious. Obnoxiously rich. Everybody, what we buy. Five houses in the same neighborhood, but they're not even close to each other. I like that. <clears throat> Shit like that. I like that. Like, don't, don't Clayton live, like, right behind you? Yeah, but right behind me is a long way. I like that. Shit like that. <clears throat> Why ain't nobody got no mask on out here? We all vaccinated and shit. Niggas still dying from vac being vaccinated, nigga. I know, and we ain't kissing no hoes in the mouth. I thought you meant us. Nah, I'm talking oh, about here in Atlanta. In here? Atlanta. In this room? Nah, yeah. not just this Atlanta. Those we went out, I ain't seen one mask. I seen a stripper bitch with a mask on, though. I didn't know if that was that's part of her. She was ugly. Out. Was it oh. part of outfit? Yeah, that shit, she was <laughs> ugly. That mask, that. some of the people keep it in the mask, because this lady got more. That way. She got pretty eyes, but the rest of her ain't popping. Yeah, but it matched her outfit, so I didn't know if she like did it she together. Did. Nobody yeah. got a mask. Like, you can't go where we at. They ain't letting a nigga in nowhere I without know. a mask. I know. I've been seeing that. Nigga, first of all, like, nigga, you can't do nothing. You can't go nowhere in San Francisco without no mask. Well, I'm vaccinated. You can't. As soon as you cross the toll bridge, you got a mask. Oh. <laughs> and you can't get in a restaurant or a club or nothing. Nothing. Unless you vaccinated. Unless no, you got, show your vaccination package. I got 20, 20 masks in my car. Yeah, I wear my mask. I wear my shit, too. Y'all take it serious? Hell yeah. Anybody caught it? 
Not, not right. in this room. You know everybody said they had it when it first started, remember? When right. that shit, like, long time ago and you were sick before you knew what it was. Right, but right, nah, right. I ain't had it where they didn't test it and nah. But this nigga almost died. Boy, boy. Hurry, you had that shit? I ain't acting like I was dying. I was in there. You was dying, nigga. You was playing a role, but nigga, you was in there dying. You probably got it from all them cream chicks. That's, That's what you got it from. Yeah. My yeah. eye fucked up right yeah, now. Yeah, I got cream. pink eye from I one. told you. <laughs> or them dirty ass glasses. Let me see. Explain your trials with COVID. Uh, what about it? How did it feel? Uh, nephew, if you kick heroin, you can kick COVID. All uh, right. Uh, short and sweet. <laughs> so, it, it, I'm, I'm just telling you the truth, bro. I mean. No, this I, shit look like fog. All right. Damn. Well, <clears throat> yeah, but that, yeah. COVID, <clears throat> I wasn't really concerned about COVID like that when I caught it. I was more so. I had been through some shit worse than that. You did? Yeah. What? Go, go use hair around for a week and then tell oh, me yeah. how you gonna feel when you got to No, I had to kick syrup, so I kind of felt like, you feel me? It's like, kind of the same thing. Yeah, Everybody kicking syrup was kicking my yeah. ass. Yeah. I ain't gonna lie, that was shitting on myself and all kind of shit. What the fuck? Yeah, I ain't gonna lie, yeah. nigga. Try you kicking try to syrup. Like when you was a nigga, yeah. the syrup, like how we was a nigga, stomach be hurting, nigga be yeah. like, nigga, laugh. You ever shark? Sharded. You ever sharded? You ain't sharded? <laughs> Tell him what sharded is, nephew. You think you got a fart, but you shit? <laughs> nigga, you shart on yourself. Nigga, be like, you try to end it, be a silent when you try to get that motherfucker off and be like, seven niggas, you gonna put the blame on somebody else? You do it, and you're like, ooh, ooh. You get that one, you feel me? That that's little what, drip, that's drip. That's what the syrup do. Yeah, that yeah, syrup, that shit fuck that shit. You gotta shit. tell the same young niggas that. No, that the, syrup, it's the syrup will make you shit on yourself. Man, it's yeah. opiate. It, it yeah, you, yo, yo, you can't eat, no appetite, your stomach be hurting, uh, nigga headaches, withdrawals, yeah. that, like all that shit. So, and I was, I had to cold turkey that shit too. Like it was just like, a, like you know, and it was tough because my mama was the syrup lady. So, uh. like. Nigga, niggas used to come from all, it was like niggas I ain't even fuck with that used to come to the apartment and be like, what's up with you, blood? <laughs> I'm like, nigga, what you doing? What's up? Your mom here? That's my mama here. What you want? Shit, bro. Follow or something. <laughs> like, your mom's like the icy lady. Like, my mama was like the candy lady house. My mama sold peels, weed, syrup, all kind of shit, right? Yeah. So. I had easy access to it, so I started sipping early. I started sipping before it became like the super duper trend where everybody, like before it became a hip hop trend. Right. Like my neighborhood, we was we was sipping, like we was sipping heavy. So that, I got almost died, well I almost died several nights. But one Damn. night, one night I'm not <laughs> off so cold behind the wheel. And I woke up the next day and was just like, where the fuck am I at? Like, I'm loaded. I'm, I'm talking about that nine was vicious. And then I got sleep apnea. So I'm laying up with a bitch one night, and she's like, oh my God, I wake up the bitch crying. I'm like, bitch, what's wrong with you, stupid ass bitch? She's like, oh my God, you died. I'm like, I died. Like, it wasn't the brain. You wasn't breathing for like five minutes. And I was trying to wake you up, and I couldn't wake you up. And I was just so scared. I was so paranoid. Bitch, shut the fuck up. It was, bitch, go get my cup. And so that's when I knew it was too much. I had to stop. I fucked up. Wait a minute, you fell asleep at the wheel and you just woke up somewhere? You yeah, I was woke up. But you ain't off. crashed? No, nah, God got me. You know how what niggas be saying. Yeah. Niggas yeah. always say that when you yeah. God got me. The Lord watch out for fools and babies. I don't know who had it, man. I said fool that day. I mean, I don't know who had it, nigga. All I know is, nigga, I got it, like, parked safely. I just nodded off of Jesus, just kept tipping the wheel just a little bit, like, yeah. like this. Hold up. No, no, no. I woke up, the car was still running and all kind of shit. <laughs> nigga, I ain't running the anyway. ass. <laughs> nigga, I was high, bro. Nigga, I woke up in the back seat with my shoes. I was, I was high. High. I was I was high. High. I was high. 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 I fucked up too, nigga. I had all my jewelry on, all kind of shit. I was like, nigga, this shit, I got to stop. This shit ain't safe. Yeah. Nigga just nod off with all the jewelry on, window down, like this here. That's why I don't know how these young niggas be high. They got it. Yeah, they be off hella shit. They be up up uh, hey, elevators. Everything. They be like this. We call it elevators. They be off all kind. They be uppers and downers. They be on That's all kind right. of different pills. Nigga, like, nigga, I'm off old perks of Zanny and the bar, nigga. Uh, huh? Man. How? How? I'm on perks, nigga. 
Zanny, another bar, so bar, thirty, a thirty, some some cat medicine. <laughs> like, nigga, like what? Nigga, what? Wow. The fuck nigga, you what? That nigga just gonna start walking up to you. Nigga, I died two days ago. <laughs> <laughs> if I lay down, I'm out of here. Long as I stay up, <laughs> I'm alive. Nigga be on hell of shit. Nigga be like, cuz what, nigga? Dude. Nigga, I'm hella educated. Nigga, what you said on that one thing? Nigga, got hella education. <laughs> hella education. Nigga done been to hella schools. <laughs> nigga, I graduated hella times. <laughs> nigga, no, hella. <laughs> nigga, <laughs> nigga, hella high. Nigga, no, nigga. Nigga got hella education, <laughs> nigga. That's hella funny. Niggas, niggas think you something. Niggas, <laughs> niggas been getting. Ah, nigga, I died. Niggas been, <laughs> niggas been to big school, nigga. <laughs> Nigga, hella dead already. Nigga, I died hella times. <laughs> nigga, I'm off hella shit. <laughs> nah, them niggas be high, man. Y'all niggas, young, young niggas, man, listen what I'm telling you, bro. Listen what I'm telling you on some real shit. Kick that shit, man. Like, you know what I'm saying? Find another way to deal with what it is that you're going through. Because what's going on, like, I flip the narrative just real quick. What's going on is a lot of these young guys, man, are suffering from uh, severe, uh, 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 like, Extreme depression. Mm -hmm. Some of these young guys are, PTSD, you know, they, a lot yeah. of the PTSD. Yeah. Um, they're, they're, uh, they're unfortunate. And, and, and here, in no form or fashion, am I trying to make a mockery of it or a joke in it? There are some functioning autistic young men out there that are suffering with hidden autism and have never been diagnosed because yeah. the parenting have never, parents have, have been in the denial. You ever told a girl, like, baby, yo, son, slow as fuck. No, he's not. That's about the fight you can get. No, he is not. Stop yeah, fucking right. talking about my son. My son is not slow. Right. Like, this, this nigga savage still counting his ABCs with letters and numbers. What's seven? A? Right to A. I'm like, damn. I'm like, bitch, your baby. And, 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 and when you talk to somebody, you can't talk to somebody about their kid. And it's hard because... There are those children that grow up and they actually are autistic. And now them niggas is on drugs, them niggas is in the streets, these niggas got anger issues. And these are the young kids that are running the world right now. These are the young kids that we're seeing that have never been properly treated. And it's unfair because nobody is understanding their frustrations, nobody is understanding their anger, nobody is understanding their disabilities. They actually have true disabilities. Bipolar. For real. Yeah, and they yeah, hide it through these drugs. Yeah. I say this because I speak from someone who comes from an active, clinically diagnosed child that had ADHD. I came from, you know, being yeah. able to, being uh, prescribed medications as a child because of just my energy and, and, and my excitement and, and hypertension but which later graduated to PTSD, which later graduated when my mother died to a depression. And, and these were certain things that we would fall into these things. We would fall into depression and I would hide my depression by my drug use, uh, profusely smoking, sipping syrup, doing all kind of shit. And then all of that stuff began to just be layers. You just put layers on. Mm -hmm. And I wanna say to the kids and to the dudes that's that's promoting this shit. It's only layers that we're allowing to hide us from the truth that we need to face. And then the reality of that, facing our truths, is understanding. Let's get rid of the layers and let's stop coating our pain with things that take us deeper into the the the, the, the crevice of our of our injuries and our disabilities. The drugs and only things. Once that shit wear off, you back to the to the reality of it. Yeah. So, you know, we must start helping these kids, start helping mentors, start tutelage, you know, I mean, the tutelage of saying it's, it's great to have, you know, <clears throat> people who may have had that experience because you could take it from them. Like, I could learn from him of his experiences. I saying, damn, my nigga, you're going to wait 20, 30 years. And by that time, nigga, your body didn't been broke down. Right. You fucked up. So we just trying to keep building, man, but that shit is real because it's affecting us so cold. Our communities are being ravished with the, 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 the promotion of the poisons. Mm -hmm. We all promote the poisons. Hip hop is guilty of doing it. Everything else in, in comedy and education and movie, we promoted the poisons. And I feel like we're the only cultural people or the only group of people that actually promote the poisons to the next generations. Yeah, well, everything. With yeah. every, with, with yeah. every, we, we promote all of the bullshit. The and, they, and they let it happen. Yeah. You, yeah. you can't, you can't talk about killing a white person. Hell no. Nah. 
Hell no. Nah. They're like, oh, nigga, want to kiss? They Dude, only, they I'm only, kidding. A they white person only, couldn't even talk about killing a white person on the song. They, would get they only going to make you pop if that's what you're talking about. For real. So it's the the poisons. Like, nigga, we can have a positive. We can have some shit. Nigga be like, I don't want to see that shit. Let a nigga say, man, nigga, Carlos, slap the fuck out of Fab on the show. Nigga, billion views. Right. Like, remember, right, them I, niggas. I would not never. Nah, nah, yeah. nah. Uncle, you would let a nigga slap me? He would. For what reason? <laughs> you gotta find better company to keep, man. This nigga here. For what reason? Fuck! He deserved it. Uh, were you a big dummy? You big dummy. dummy. <laughs> this is a big one. This nigga got 50 albums, man. That's crazy. For real, man. That's crazy. You got it anyway. Ain't no chunk shit. I got shit on my albums, too, huh? That's shit, I got shit with shit with niggas with Kendrick Lamar's and rappers, man. Jada Kisses and nigga, nigga rapping. I can rap, nigga. Hell yeah, man. You was over there battling and shit. I'm a rapping ass nigga. I can rap. For real freestyling. Yeah. You know them niggas always be like, nigga, I ain't a rapper. I'm a dead nigga. I'm a rapper. Yeah. Like most niggas nowadays, nigga, I'm a dope boy, nigga. I ain't no rapper, nigga. I sell crack, nigga. I'm a pimp, no, nigga. I'm a rapper. I rap, nigga. I love this shit. One thing about a nephew, rap has always provided you with the things that you have in life. You know? For sure. You know, For some, sure. Pe some people say, I trapped and rapped. No, nah, nigga, you I rap. You can actually say, I if rap. I got it, it would have some type of rapping involved in it. I rap. Like, you feel me? Like, I, I, my, my pen has provided. provided for me. Like, you know what I'm saying? From where things that I wrote for other artists, big records that I wrote for several artists, um, to stuff that I wrote for myself, to whatever it was. I, I wrote my way into this shit, man, and I am happy to say, nigga, here, to, yes, I am a rapper, and, man, my pen has provided. And to all the writers out there, please continue to create, for real. Because, nigga, as a writer, as an author, as a creator, your pen, has, it has no expiration date on it. Mm -hmm. Remember that. Now, showbiz, time will take you, put you on stage, and time will take you off stage. That's just professionalism of understanding that it's a young man's sport. Mm -hmm. But I'll tell you this, as a curator, that pen has no expiration date and continue to keep going. Quincy Jones wrote Thriller at 50. Yeah. He was almost 52. <laughs> so you gotta keep that shit going, man. Stay curating, man. Don't never lose your creativity. That's the beauty of this shit. This shit is like, we get lost in our creativity so much that people get, you know, it becomes strenuous and stifling and. Now they no longer want to move forward with that, man. Change the whole trajectory of somebody's creativity. But your imagination, man, one thing my mother always told me, continue to invest in your imagination, and you can be anywhere in the world that you wish to be. You envisioned it. And the power of belief is a strong system, man. So shout out to all of the believers out there and the curators. Hell yeah. yeah For real. Shit. That's all we do here. For real. I'm watching it. It's right, unfolding. Shit, do comedians write? Yeah, some For comedians. Other comedians? Yeah. yeah, nigga, Paul Mooney wrote for uh, Richard Pryor. Hell of people. Kevin Hart got a whole team of writers. That's hard. No, that's right. You ever wrote for some people? Yeah. Would you ever say who you wrote for? Mm. All right, no. Quentin Miller. No, you don't supposed to tell me. <laughs> that's that's kind of like cheating the craft, man. You know, like that's also some, you know, like jazz musicians type when you riffing type shit. You don't right. even you don't even want credit for everything. Right. That you did, you get what I'm saying? Yeah, sometimes you help somebody find it. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But, what movie was you in? Uh, bunch of shit. I was he a movie, movie star, man. No, I'm not. I used to be on Nigga don't even be over there. He ain't told I'm them folks about house none of that shit. Yeah. That's what it was with G Money. Yeah. 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 That's what it was with G Money. Shit, That's that what you be doing, the moves, the G Money moves you be making. The ones that be like, Cutting side deals and shit. Yeah, you be doing them side deals and shit, nigga. Niggas pop up with a commercial. Nigga, how you get out here and get interviewed? <laughs> man, we go to Hot 9105. This nigga got an interview. I'm like, what the fuck? Why you hook me up? Yo, come out and party with me. <laughs> nigga cut side deals and shit, G-Money. No, yeah. I know why I be having to cut myself in. What? Because you be cutting me out. <laughs> what the fuck you talking about? How else am I get in? If I don't find my own way, you going to get to get the bullshitting. I take care of my uncle, man. You do. You take great care of me. What y'all doing down here in Atlanta, man? Fucking off. Put a whole budget to the side. Just fuck it off. Word. I ain't gonna lie. We fucking it off. It ain't even no explanation. We ain't had shit to do. 
You know, I said niggas like, oh yeah, I got hella shit going on, man. Nigga, this was all. You see, I text you on Monday, nigga. I'm out here. What's up? <laughs> we on the flim like a motherfucker, nigga. We but don't that's know shit. That's how we live our life. Bro. That's how we live our life. Like we didn't been all around the world. I'm talking about nigga. We didn't. We was talking about the other night. Me and this nigga, we in London. We went to the to the Raiders game in London, and uh, we just chilling. I'm like, nigga, let's go to Paris. Nigga, we hop on the train, go to Paris, pop up in Paris at 2 in the morning, don't know where the fuck we at, don't know where we going, don't know shit, we just out there. I'm like, fuck, unk, let's find a room somewhere, man, speak English, get a room or something for the night. We go out, nigga, we're in Paris, we walking around Paris, nigga, just fucking around. But it's just like, I live life on the go like that, man, man. you know what I'm saying? Like, I, I, I'm, 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 I'm a spontaneous individual, man. This and, nigga already do before Luke when he said he went to the Raiders game in London. Yeah, yeah, remember when, you know, they yeah, play over yeah, do that shit, yeah. man. So we, I don't uh, want nobody to go. Hey, <laughs> <laughs> that shit was live, nigga. I'm talking about, nigga, about 100,000 motherfuckers at that game. Yeah. That shit was live. You know, Raiders fans go anywhere. They could be playing in hell, niggas like, cuz I'm going. <laughs> Fuck it, cuz I'm going. I already bought the tickets, man. Nigga. I bought the tickets. I've been Fuck it, man. I'm hella tired, man. <laughs> <laughs> I'm hella. sitting next to the devil, nigga. Fuck it. Nigga, nigga. I got people's out there in hell. Hell of my niggas in hell, nigga. girl. Nigga, hell. <laughs> I got hella niggas. Just, just so, hella out there. So that's how we do, man. So, like, nigga, last week we just was chilling. Like, nigga, let's go to Atlanta next week. He's like, what for? Like, nigga, let's just go. There's so, something to do. We chilling, man. You know, I know it's something to do every fucking all the time out here. Every night, y'all got. Your nigga, you got to sell dope out here. You got to do some form of illegal if you want to be involved in like the nightlife. Nigga, this nigga every night. If you're not somebody that we got a actually. small ass club last night. The bitch charged me fifteen hundred for a for a table and three bottles. Yeah. But y'all don't even drink. Man. Uh, Niggas in Atlanta spend money like they hate money. Listen, like nigga, I walk yeah. in the club. The club this big. Yeah. I say, can we get a table? She said, yeah, fifteen hundred. I want some rosé. Well, that's an extra hundred, because that's a, a bitch, what? Mm -mm. 1500 I'm taking the table Mr. the table this <laughs> big. You don't think <laughs> that we, table coming with me. Table this big. I bought it. This we, is furniture stuff. Oh, we got the house. Like this this, this Avery's, bitch. I don't drink. Like, I drink <laughs> champagne. Other than that, I don't drink shit, right? So, nigga, we, we got about five bottles in the refrigerator right now and at the Airbnb. We took hella shit, nigga. And I, I got the bag in, bitch, like, man, what you doing with that bottle? Bitch, I just paid $5 for this bottle. You don't think I'm gonna take this? With it. Yeah. Bitch, I'm inviting people over. They drinking, bitch. Yeah. I, they trying to get $5. <laughs> I, and I own a club, so I know the prices of shit. Like, I be like, this shit costs $39, bitch. Ain't no shit like alcohol. That's why they only want black people to have alcohol licenses. Like, liquor license, nigga. If y'all need to get a liquor license, get one, nigga. That shit is, man, ain't no money like that. Mm. But you got, to, you got to do something illegal out here to survive, because, nigga, every night been expensive. We did, every night we going out bottles and shit, and this shit is expensive. I don't know what I'm, I'm gonna send it! No. <laughs> <laughs> we trapping, we gonna bring some of that Cali. If y'all need some of that dope Arizona, <laughs> tap in expeditiously. Let them know where they can uh, <laughs> tap in and get some uh, dope air shit. Oh, uh, the dope air clothing line, man, what we did, we, we created some shit where you, we don't have a real huge e-commerce. Like, we created a real old school trap. It was this block where we was from in Oakland called the Red Fence. Now, the Red Fence was like the number one weed spot in the world, right? Like, to us. Because, you know, Oakland niggas think that's the world. So, in Oakland, the, this weed spot was called the Red Fence. And, nigga, they wouldn't sell you over, like, you couldn't buy over a zip. Like, they won't sell you hella. You damn near couldn't buy over a half or something. But it'll be days where, nigga, you'll go and it's lined up. This one, you could do this for weed and nigga wouldn't think you was the police. Right, yeah. Like, when you could ride up and be like, think about it. Yeah. Nowadays, you do this, hey, bro, this police ass right. nigga, bro. Right. But that nigga the 12, bro. <laughs> you see that nigga? Well, that's nigga. So, but niggas, we be young, and we catch the bus all the way to East Oakland, right? And it'll be like, they be like, young niggas, what y'all want? Like, man, let's get two for 15. Man, ain't no deals, man. Straight dub. Like, all right, fuck it. Bro, you got three, 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 bro. So niggas be teaming up and going to get weed. But the significance of what I'm saying was you could only get that weed from there. Nobody else had it. The shit they had. They had some, like, I don't, this shit probably was, shit was probably like some hair on. It was sprayed. It was sprayed. It had to be like, it had to have something on this weed at the time. It like, was crazy. Listen what I'm telling you, my nigga. I was 15, 16 years old. Do you know what a bus ride to East Oakland was like, nigga? I'm trying to figure out the difference. That's like going to Papa Do's and Marietta on the bus right now. 
Fuck. <laughs> like, fuck no. Like this shit. Was, At least 45 you don't minutes. even go. Yo, Listen, yeah, man. Yeah. 45 minutes buzz right? right, for sure. For some weed, nigga, for a young nigga, 15, 16. And they only one way. Yeah. They only one way. Seconds. 45 minutes back. One right. way, man. Fuck That's no. one way. Yeah, Listen. Ain't back and forth. This shit was a voice. Nigga be sad like this the whole time. Like, nigga, I'm gonna get loaded, nigga. I'm already know. I'm gonna me a red hot burrito, nigga. Some burritos, a Sprite, <laughs> nigga. On my mama, nigga. And then, um, you feel me, bro? Mm, yeah. A Philly. Nigga, I'm, I'm to the face, nigga, on my mama, bruh. And this one, Puff Puff Pass was in for sure. Nigga, beat you up by breaking the rotation, nigga. Nowadays, y'all niggas smoke like y'all yeah. smoking by yourself. Yeah. Nigga, them arguments, nigga. Yeah. Nigga be watching your smoke, too, like. Mm-mm. All right, nigga, two hits, nigga, and pass my weed. We young, nigga, like this. Three hits to get you high. You high, you. Yeah, nigga, I'm gonna say this a little bit later, nigga. Uh. What y'all niggas on the do? So nigga be high, right? But you can only get this weed from there. So this shit we had niggas fiending. What we did with the dope air store, you can only get it from us. We don't sell it in no other stores. Ain't no like we don't we don't do e-commerce. If you got dope air on, nigga, you got it from us. Either out the store or out the DM. You either got it out the store or you ordered it in the DM. Like if you hit a nigga DM, like bro, I'm trying to buy some shit. Like you feel me? That's like. So that's the cold side. If you hit the DM, you hit my DM like this, and I'm like, all right, come on, I send you some shit. And uh, but that's how it is. So our shit is uh, dope air co on Instagram. And y'all hit us up, man, and grab the shit. But man, I, I'm I'm expanding the brand right now, man. We doing all kind of crazy shit. Like we got the, we man, we I'm really trying to take this fashion shit to another level, bro. Right. Like really, you know, the whole team, man, is very focused on you know, the marketing and, and, and the exclusivity of what we've been doing. So the dope area exclusiveness, uh, duct tape with, with our clothing line, we just really trying to really just expand it and, and to watch the things flourish the way that it's flourished. Man, I'm, I'm, I'm humbled by it. Like, you know what I'm saying? To be able to be like, damn, nigga, nigga, we made, nigga, this much, you know what I'm saying? You know, I ain't, you know, you, I nigga, mean, how much that nigga made? I'm mean, gonna you know, say the number, but. <laughs> Don't be, say the number. Yeah, I would never do that. I ain't one of them niggas. Yeah. But saying what we did, man, that shit is, it's dope, man. It's dope. I'm literally. Literally, like, man, all some clothes. <laughs> like, nigga, like, nigga made this shit all clothes. Yeah. And then we just got licensed up for our dope era Zaza band, so uh, America will be seeing that, you feel me? We got the craziest exotics right now, man, of what we got going. So it's big, big, big shout-out to the whole team. Big shout-out to our cultivation site. Big shout-out to the, all of our team that's putting together some of the dopest exotics that the rest of the country will see, man. When you see them, zo uh, them dope era Zaza packs, man, you already know. Well, yeah, shit, we man, there that. it is right there. I got you. I got yeah, you. I'm saying y'all y'all package. Yeah. We're going to need our yeah. shit. Yeah, yeah, feel me. And next time I'm in Oakland, I'm coming. You got to do it. Yeah, I got, I'm coming. Oh, you so got to do it. Yeah. You got to do it. Cuzzo pulled up on us. It was lit. Yeah. Oh, appreciate yeah. you, my guy. Man, I appreciate yeah. you stopping. For real, Cuzzo. Man, oh, thank you. Appreciate you. I ain't fucking with you, nephew. Oh, this nigga ain't fucking with us, man. I ain't fucking with you. Why, yeah? I'm fucking with you, man. You just put me on blast on this motherfucker. My what? You told everybody, bud, that I had one class all day. That was fucked up, bud. He nigga, you saw people go. you was on camera. Yeah, that ain't as bad as having class all day. You just class. said you're not ashamed of nothing you did, so you're not ashamed of your one class. You smart I, now. I like to tell my story. <laughs> I like to tell my story. I, I just like... was throwing you a pass to set up your story. It was that was all... you? Yeah, you told it. Look at you now. You went from heroin to rollies, nigga. <laughs> Two chains, nigga. Why? Oh, nigga, you done came nigga. all the way up. You came up, nigga. You got an iPhone, yeah, nigga. You when you got out of rehab, nigga, you got a flip phone. The daddy that came back. What? Can you do me one favor? If I'm start, if you think I'm starting to relapse, get my shit, cause I don't want to find it. <laughs> <laughs> Go, on, man. Hey, man, hey, we like y'all. Mr. Fell, let's get it quick. Fuck that shit, man. Already, bro. Yeah. Hell yeah. Up over here, right? Can you come get this shit over here? <laughs> right here, man. You stupid ass man. That one class. <laughs> God. Look stupid. Oh, I got my pants on.